Breaking news, we have just announced a 24-match schedule for ISL's C4. This is massive. It starts in June in the U.S. It goes to Europe for uh, some of August, all of September, some of October, back to North America for the playoffs, and then to the Asia-Pacific uh, region for the second half of the playoffs ends back in North America, end of December for the final. Um, it's, this is the biggest season of ISL we've ever seen. I'm here with swim, swim co-founder, Mel Stewart, uh, ISL announcer, Rowdy Gaines and Cali Condors GM, Jason Lezak to just get your thoughts on what this looks like. Jason, I want to start with you. I'm guessing you obviously <laughs> didn't find out about this today. Um, so what what did you think when you first heard this announcement and what has it meant for your team thus far? Yeah, so um, back at the playoffs last season in Idaho, man, uh, there was a lot of discussions about this. And actually, um, you know, the founder had talked to a lot of the athletes and most of them were in favor of a season like this. Obviously, there are those um, that think it's too much, but to make this a successful, um, you know, it's a startup business. And, and how, do, how can we make it successful if we're only swimming five, six times a year, right? Any other professional sports organization has longer seasons. They compete more often. And as we talked about beforehand, look, it's 96 hours of potential TV coverage, right? And if we want to get fans, if we want to get people supporting us as Cali Condor, supporting us as the league, there's no better way than to put it on more often. So for me, it's great. If you looked at that schedule, you, you said it. We're in North America a lot this season coming up. And we, we weren't in the last two seasons. We had that opportunity season one for you know a couple of matches here and there. But um, this is a, a great schedule to actually go to the local clubs and go to the different cities that we're going to be in and get the support and get that fan base. We need that. And we need to establish that in the United States to make this league successful. Great that it's coming back to North America. The North American leg is going to start June 22nd. It's going to roll through July 22nd. Um, no, it's think, June 3rd, Mel. You're looking at 2022 there. So June 3rd. Ooh, June and, 3rd. Uh, it's July, coming quick. With July the cancellation 3rd. of the World Championships, uh, there's no better time to start it when people were thinking they were going to be ready to swim fast anyways. It, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I don't know if you can provide insight or not, but it, it, that, that, else, that rocked everybody. I, I suppose we should have seen it coming. With with FINA postponing delay, it looks like they're postponing until 2023. But it, with with that opening, was there was there a lot of communications behind the scenes that like, hey, this is our moment, this is our year, this is our time to fill the gap because it, it feels that way. Well, I mean, we we did that during the Olympic year too, and I think uh, with with that being pushed back a year, we gave these athletes an opportunity to not only have a great training environment, which a lot of them didn't have. But then they also could race in that Budapest bubble, right? So no different here. I mean, I think the plan was to start in June anyways, but maybe to move it up a couple of weeks now to get it going a little earlier. Um, but yeah, that was the original plan was June. So I, I believe that whether the world's happened or not, we still want to get this going. We want this on TV. We want people excited about ISL. And it's not, you know, a once a year thing where, you know, you compete six weeks and then we'll see you again in uh, 10 months, right? So um, like, it, like any other sport I mentioned, let's uh, get this rolling and make it a little bit longer. So Jason, you, you did mention that this was discussed in Eindhoven at the playoffs and that a lot of athletes were on board for more racing, which was my initial reaction. I mean, 24 matches over the entire summer and fall is a lot of racing. And I was curious as to whether athletes were actually going to buy into this and, and going to go for that much racing because especially in the u.s we're used to a pro swim a month right and then you have your taper meet you know down the road um it's just a very different model than a lot of our athletes are used to and so how have you heard from your athletes at all um since worlds has been postponed are they getting amped up are they getting excited for this now um isl that starts right in june well, to be honest, Coleman, that 24 matches is not per team, right? So you got to break it down per team. It's going to be a lot less, um, less than half of that, obviously. So, you know, there is a lot of racing, but I think one thing that the Americans have lacked over the course of, um, you know, since I was swimming back in my day is racing. I used to travel to Europe to race because they didn't have anything as similar in the United States. And if you see how fast all these 
you know, if you want a European swimmers and other people in the world swim all the time, they're prepared because they're used to doing that. And I think the Americans are starting to get used to it with more racing and understanding that training can be different. You can swim fast more often. And I think people like that. And on the other side of that, with more racing, there's going to be more prize money to be won. So, um, you know, I think athletes buying into this, it's not as hard when you tell them you're going to be making some more money. Right. So I think that's, um, part of it. And the athletes I talk to, um, you know, you, you can feel free to reach out to some of them, but the ones on my team that I talked to in Eindhoven, when they discussed it, we're really happy and, and really looking forward to a season like this. Um, like I said, once the word got spread around, there were a few skeptics, but I think the majority are into it. And that's, what's important. We got to get the ones who are into it and those who want to support this are going to do it. And if those that aren't, you're always going to have people left out. And we've had people left out, um, in the first, few seasons, right? That a lot of people say, where's this person? Where's this person? We wish that person competed, but for whatever reason, they decided not to. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes this year, but I'm pretty confident that most athletes are going to want to do it. And like, for the reasons I mentioned, Brownie's going to call 24 matches. Is that, <laughs> so do you, do you feel like, you know, you, you call a lot of races under, under all your current contracts, but do you feel like you really get into the flow, into the groove when you, when you, you know, day four of the day eight cycle of worlds at the Olympic games. So is, is, is this applicable with 24 matches? Or are you feeling like, Oh, I got this. No, I know you, you probably think I'm, I'm, I'm kidding or lying, but I love every single minute of it. I, I really do. I, I see and feel the energy that the athletes have down on the deck. And, and uh, when I was in uh, Budapest for season two, that six weeks, you know, everybody was just really grateful to be able to have a chance to do something like this in our sport. And, and I agree with, with Jason, man, the fact that if you're going to build this brand and build this different environment that we have in our sport, you got to be, you got to be longer than six weeks, man. I mean, you, you don't want to be the XFL, you know I mean? You, you go in there with a six or eight week season and then nobody cares, you know, for another 10 months, like Jason said. And so I, I think spreading it out is a good thing. And I think racing is a good thing. I mean, and that's something that has lacked in our sport in many ways. And, and I've had long conversations with Caleb about this. And he said, the, the biggest thing that helps him is racing. You know, you, you can't substitute that. And, and, and then you're, you're with the best athletes or best swimmers in the world and you're all training together and you're learning from, from each other. And, and, and I don't think that's a bad thing either. And, and so I, I, you know, my hat's off to them and, and I've been helping with, because I want to bring it to Florida, dude. I, I want to bring this to Florida one way or another. And so I don't think I'm supposed to talk about this, but next week, <laughs> I'm going to, I don't know, Jason, are you, are you going like this? Uh, no, no, I just week? had a little itch there, but uh, you can talk about <laughs> wanting to bring it to Florida. I want to bring it to Orange County. So I'm looking yeah. at that schedule. It says North America, North America, North America. I think Florida, Florida and uh, Florida. Florida and California are definitely two of the best swimming populations and um, great places to have it. Yeah. You know, yeah. In, pri in private conversations with Constantine, and I don't think he'd get upset if, if I said this, it, but he's, you know, I, it, the question always comes up, is this a business? And he seems very sober about it. He's like, I'm committed. I'm committed for years. And these yeah. athletes need to, they need to understand the professionalism of being a pro athlete. And what's interesting is that staring down 24 matches, I know they're not going to do all 24 and it's, um, but it's still a long season. He, he has, he's delivering and saying, you want to be a pro now, now this, this is your opportunity to be a pro. And what it seems like is we're going to find out who really wants this. We're going to see by participation, who really wants it. And, um, something that I have liked in, in is, is when, a lot of our top stars aren't competing and we see other athletes bloom. We see other athletes uh, perform. And, and, and I, I like that this space is providing this opportunity. So the, you know, the overall question is if, if a Caleb Dressel isn't there, if, um, if, if you're, if you're, if your Adam Peavy's aren't there, if your if your big stars aren't there, it does ISL, does the brand get this? Do you get to the finish line? Does it work? Well, honestly, I, I believe these stars will be there. Um, I mean, I have, I can't give you a, a, a certain yet, but like you said, 
like Rowdy said, Caleb likes to race. And, um, you know, there are some people that don't like to race as much and they haven't really been in the league. Right. So I think the ones that do like to race have been in the league and they're going to continue to do it. But, um, you know, Constantine's always said the ISL, it's not about what, who you were or, you know, what your best times coming in, we can make stars, right. You, you know, you look at someone on our team last year, like Bita Nelson, look how many events she won last year. Look how much publicity she got. Um, she wasn't a quote unquote star like Caleb coming into the season. Right. Um, but everyone was talking about her all season long. So I'm curious, uh, I mean, Rowdy, like you said, you get to talk to a lot of these athletes, you travel with them. You're on, you're basically on the same schedule. You probably work longer hours, but, um, with, you know, in the last couple seasons, we've only seen it be in Europe, right? We, this past season, it was a stint in Naples, a stint in Eindhoven, um, what do you feel like the advantage of, of having three different continents now involved? We got North America, we got Europe, we've got Asia Pacific. Um, what do you feel like the advantages or disadvantages of that much travel is for these athletes? Well, the, the, the travel is going to be an issue, but I, again, if, if we ever get over this crummy thing called COVID, I don't think the travel is going to be that big of a deal. I think the last couple of years, it's been a big deal because of COVID, but you know, these kids are used to traveling all over the world, you know, and it's not like they're going to go to a meet for two days and then leave and have to go to, you know, they're not going to Orange County and then they're flying to Tokyo and then they're flying to Europe all in a matter of a week. At least they'll be able to kind of sit and, and, and be in one place for, for a while. Uh, but this is what athletes of today do, man. They have to get on a plane and, and I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, I, 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 I do think that it, it's important to be um, be cognizant of the fact that we need to make this um, worldwide, uh, especially North America. I think for this to be successful, we have to have the ISL in the United States specifically, in Canada, um, those two those two countries specifically, but especially the United States, because uh, if we're going to build this into something bigger. And I don't, by the way, I don't, I'm not Jason. I don't work for the ISL on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're thinking, well, I'm just an ISL homer. I'm not, they don't pay me a salary. I mean, I get paid to do the broadcasting, but, but I'm saying, because I just believe it's a good thing for the kids, man, dude, Mel, seriously, don't you wish we had something like this? I mean, I, I can't even imagine if we had something like this it would be so cool. So I just think people need to suck it up figure out how to way to travel from one place to another and, you know, and do what's best for you, but also do what's best for the sport, because this is really good for the sport. It is. There's, there's some information that might be helpful to our, our biggest swim nerds out there. And, and oftentimes we wonder why isn't there a world cup in the United States and it's finances. Fino, Fino right. wants a rights fee and rights fees are not driven in the U S market. And, uh, that's one situation where ISL Constantine is saying, you know what? I'll make right. the investment. I'll make the investment in the North American and you need the North American market to move. So if you've ever wondered why we've never had a FINA world cup in the U S it's just dollars. They can't. Right. Um, it, it's it, as we stand here now, we, we, uh, there's, there's an elephant in the room and, and I think that it, we, we should state it and, and, and be, I'll be honest. This thing came out. It, this was shiny, new. This was this, this was an extraordinary, pretty product, and we've now rolled through three years. And I think in in the third year, everyone was saying, "Okay, this is great," but I think everyone's sort of over what it is. We've seen other productions actually, you know, take from ISL, and and uh, ISL has been a been a, a trailblazer in terms of their production and what they've done and their innovations. But I feel like the audience going into season four really wants. They want something else. And I know that something else is brewing. And someone whispered in my ear that there's an, an announcement in the, in the coming weeks, something that you should stay tuned for, which is there will be some changes which will make the uh, make these matches more interesting. I, I was not told what they are, but I'm, I am being told that it's going to be. A, Jason will a, tell a, us right now. Just, I, Joe, yeah. yeah, Jason, tell us right now, buddy. So there's this thing called the. Um, all right. I, obviously, I can't tell you, but it's going to be exciting. I will tell you that um, we were discussing it in Eindhoven, and I think everybody was on board for it and figuring out how we can 
move around the schedule to make this work because you know we only have two hours and part of that uh reason having two hours we can't put in these distance events i know it's unfortunate for those people who love distance who love to swim it who love to watch it but it just doesn't make for fitting all these events in two hours and and to add some more events to this to to make it even a greater show might mean reducing other things and and part of it is as you just said i mean i was watching another competition and we're like, wow, they really made some changes to that set. And they really put some lights and did that. I wonder if ISL had any influence on that, right? Um, you know, people are taking notice of that and making it nicer. But there is something about ISL that's different. Um, you do watch some of those other meets and they compete. And then you sit around and you're waiting about 10, 15 minutes until you see the next race. And in the ISL, as you know, it's boom, boom, boom. I mean, there's about 90 seconds from the time someone touches the wall, they're climbing out and the next person is diving in. So that excitement keeps happening. And that's what makes ISL different. But I also believe that you guys are going to really enjoy uh, what's brewing. And uh, I mean, I don't know when the announcement's coming. If you said three weeks, great. I can't wait to read about it. One to two weeks. It's One to two. It could be three. Right. They're, they're, they're saying information is going to start coming out here almost on a weekly basis. Um, but on the run up to uh, to the fourth season, Coleman, you got a question that they won't answer. Something really hard driving. Well, I am curious as as to you two's perspectives on on the finances on the payment side. Right, that's been a thing we've heard about. We've heard about late payments, and we've also had athletes come forward and say, "Listen, this is how businesses work." Right, um, they they make late payments, and that's just part of being a athlete um you know we uh, comments on our site get pretty ridiculous but um i am curious as to from you two's perspective rowdy is well you both get paid by the isl um do you think this is going to be something that's through season four it's going to be sustainable financially just in terms of payments getting made at, at, a, at a reasonable rate but well, it's hard for me to comment on that cole coleman from a personal standpoint because I got paid <laughs> and I got paid on time and I got you know, paid. everything, everything worked out great for me. So uh, I, you know, I've heard the same rumblings, but everybody I've talked to individually, um, whether things were late or not, I mean, they didn't have a problem with it. And, and, and most people I talked to said they got paid on time. Um, and I don't know if I should even bring this person's name into it, but believe me, it's, it's, it's a big star. And they said they weren't paid on time and they weren't worried about it, that they would do it for free uh, because that's how much they loved it. And, um, but they did get paid, you know? So I, I didn't find, again, Jason would know about this a lot more than I did would, but I didn't find that many people that were in that, that bucket of not getting paid. I, but I haven't talked to that many. And uh, I just know from personal um experiences i had i've never had a problem the last two seasons you know in, in business it's interesting <laughs> it's because I, I, I heard this topic a lot and, and everyone was was a lot of people were very noisy about it and i understand you know right it, it is what it is however i'm also an old man who under who, who's who's you know we're working across 50 60 contracts and companies pay at, at, at swim a swim. different a different le- at swim swim excuse me Thank you, Colin. And, and companies pay it at different rates. Some people pay up front. Some people pay yeah. net 15. Some people pay net 30. Some people pay, you know, that you do the work and they pay you six months later. And it's, um, but it's, it's, it's cultural and it's, and it's, uh, it's just, it's just not as big an issue in, in, in my world, which people don't want to hear, but that's a reality of the business world. So, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, obviously, with all the talk, I mean, I read Swim Slam. I see what's going on. I see all the haters out there. Um, they they have to understand. I mean, this is a startup, and uh, you know, we have a founder, and we have somebody putting money into it. And unfortunately, until there's some revenue and a lot of revenue, this costs a lot of money. So uh, the athletes have to understand that. And and there was discussion in Eindhoven about that. And um, I think just like the season, I think the athletes we're starting to understand, wow, okay, this is why payments are, are a little late, or this is what happened or, or things like that. So um, not always in the, in the control of, Hey, here's $40 million for a season. Let's go. Everyone gets paid right now. Um, that's not how it's going to work. And for, as far as last season, everything was, or 2020 season, everything was already paid up. 
Um, so, you know, anyone that was complaining about that, I don't think they have the right to. Um, it was taken care of this season. The final solidarity is supposed to be next month. And, and you can ask the athletes. I actually paid all the athletes solidarity today with a lot of that money. So, um, you know, hopefully next month it'll be paid off and everybody's going to be happy. Um, but, the, you know, there's always that chance of things coming a little bit late. And the expectations, like I said, have to be there based on this is a startup. And having a season like this makes it more um, exciting, makes people want to watch it more hours on TV. It means possible more sponsorship money and, and things like that, where now we can start talking about coming in and a lot easier to make these payments. So, um, you know, obviously not everybody's going to be happy about being paid late sometimes, um, but it is what it is. And I don't think anybody has quit the league for not being paid on time, right? So, this is something the athletes love, and I think they're going to continue to do this and understand where we are, and hopefully we can move forward in a, in a positive light and uh, get everybody behind us.